Jeremy Ellis here, maker of Roxetta.com, Twitter at Roxetta. I'm going to show you the easiest way I can find of running uh, TensorFlow, the new Google neural network deep learning artificial intelligence software. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to this GitHub site. We're going to click on copy to clipboard, which is really exactly the same thing with dot git after it. Um, and we're going to log in. I've already logged into Cloud9. It's the typical just log in username stuff and create a new workspace. I'm going to call it uh, Tensor, whatever. And the important part here is to paste that copied URL from my GitHub site. See, this is uh, selected. You can click on it if you want. Create workspace. So it's creating a cloud workspace, a Ubuntu. Uh, Linux um, workspace for you. It's pretty quick. Uh, it's grabbing a couple of things from my GitHub site. And then all we are going to do is run a batch file that installs the necessary um, things. So here we go. All we're going to do is run it and then wait about 12 minutes. So after about 12 minutes, if you get to this line, it may have worked properly. Uh, you're welcome to scan back here and see what it says, but if there's a problem, it's probably more to do with Cloud9 changing something or TensorFlow changing something, so you probably can't fix it anyway. So hopefully things have worked. And basically, that right-clicking and run is all we do. Uh, if you read those little blurbs, you can close this window. Um, so let's try one. Here's a rock set of file. We right click, we run, it opens up a new terminal, a reminder, close these terminals after because sometimes they open up processes that will affect the next one. Um, there's a little echo and there, 42. It ran the um, 42, it ran this Python program. Now you could do the long route of running it. Um, I'll show it to you. Here's little reminders. Uh, the main reminder is this. So I'm going to copy that, paste it there. See now I'm in a virtual environment and I can ls and find there's the Python command. So I can write Python hello 42.py and run it and get the exact same thing. Remember it's running that command. It says hello TensorFlow and then 42 which is the adding of 10 and 32 in a neural network environment. Okay so let's try a couple more. Uh, I'm not going to do this this method. If you ever want to get out of that virtual environment you write deactivate. I'm going to use my um, just clicking on these things. So here we go. There's Hello42 again. Uh, here's Good2D, and there's the Python file. We can have a quick look at it. Okay, so it's going to do some stuff. So we just run it. And I would suggest going through all of these uh, in order. There's one, the TensorBoard one, that's a little more advanced. But here it's figuring out uh, some TensorFlow stuff, but it's working. Okay, so the next one I'm going to do is I'm going to run this one, which is TB example. And while that one's running, I'm going to run TensorBoard. Notice both of these things are up. They're both running at the same time. But TensorBoard is a web server thing, which shows you um, what's going on in your neural network. So here it's thinking, there we go. Now it says this, but in Cloud9 you run everything with the preview button and we're previewing this running application. It'll open up in the window, but I hate this way of doing things, so I always go to the main window. And let's see if things are working. 
There we go. There's my loss graph. Uh, I need to learn more about these things, but at least it works. Uh, there's no histogram on this one, but if we looked at a graph, that shows you the graph, and every one of these has information on it. So it's, it's all working in Cloud9 in a few minutes. Um, getting back here, I like to close out that to give myself a little bit more room. Um, now, I did do something interesting. Let's actually have a look at this. I changed the temporary directory. And if we look at TB example, it's used this directory as well. It added data on. The reason I've done that is right here in Cloud9 is that temporary 5 uh, folder. If you use the normal method of just temp, it would still be in the program. Here, let's get out of these things. Um, it would still be here, but you would have to go TMP and you would have to do a directory. I've downloaded and tested some stuff there, but it's not in this visual display here. So I went through this uh, Python thing and changed temp data to this home Ubuntu workspace. Workspace is the main workspace that we're in. Anyway, let's run a couple of other ones. Oh, there are no more here to run. Um, I'll be adding more later. There are two more sets. There's DB Compose. Where's the other person? It's interesting. One of my other ones didn't load. Oh well. Um, now, this shows a good reason why to use these batch files. Here's the Python. It's running. Um, ooh, that's actually wrong. Let me fix that. I'll fix that on the. It's running Python hidden but it's adding all this extra stuff to it. And that's one of the reasons just clicking instead of typing or copying that from somewhere is quite useful. Uh, I'm missing a file, a folder up here, unless I can find it. So I'll check my GitHub site, but here it is. It's running the, the different threads again. And let's see what it's doing. It's training uh, moon data. This data is all in the sim data folder. This was by someone B composes. Uh, I've got a link somewhere. And it did a, an accuracy of 90, 0.971. Um, and, and there are a whole bunch of other rock set of files. You can always go into the rock set of files, see what it's running, go have a look at the Python file. Once again, these rock set of files are just bash files that are setting things up properly. They're setting up the uh, virtual environment. And they're just making it click, click and easy. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'll be learning more about TensorFlow and hopefully pass it on to you later.